Hey everyone, it's Katrina Sawa here, the Jumpstart Your Biz Coach with jumpstartyourmarketing.com. And I want to share a cool, or, or not a cool, I, I was thinking today, actually in the shower, <laughs> about positioning, positioning yourself. Because one of the things that we were working on at my event last weekend which was my Jumpstart Your Biz online event where we were getting hands on with our techie, was <clears throat> certain things like needed to be positioned well on in the graphics of things that you're creating in your website and how you're presenting yourself and with photos and things like that. And so I thought, you know, a lot of people need help on this because I see a lot of entrepreneurs trying to create their own website or their own marketing materials or struggling with packaging and pricing yourself. And it's really critical that there's a few things that you do to set up yourself so that you're the expert and not what I call is positioning. And so positioning can mean a few different things. First of all, when I was growing up in my entrepreneurial path, right, about 12 years ago, um, I started 16 years ago, mind you, but when I started getting coaching and things like that, positioning was, um, you needed to, at that time, mentors and coaches and gurus were saying to <clears throat> position yourself up here where your clients are down here so that they look up to you and um, you're worth more money, right? And so positioning equated with charging a higher fee and not giving too much access to yourself. So the more one-on-one -on -one you got, the higher price point you would pay, and um, the less one-on-one, -on -one, the less access that you had. So that was a positioning thing that I learned. And um, I'm not sure that I recommend doing that to, to too much to this extent these days. Back then, it was, you know, this online marketing and coaching stuff was a little bit newer. And people were like, coaching, what's that, you know? And now it's just such a mainstream thing that if you position yourself too much higher than your prospects and, and clients, um, they're not gonna necessarily get that touchy-feely kind of uh, energy with you, and they may not hire you if they don't think they can actually touch you, right? So be careful. Um, getting your ego in the way when you're positioning. So that's one of the lessons lessons I had to learn along the way because I did do what they said and I kind of um, alienated myself for a year or two from some people that I was networking with in my even in my local area. And since I've shaken that off, <laughs> I've shaken that off and uh, now it's really raw. It's like Katrina raw, um, you don't have to be quite as raw or quite as no filter as me in your business to be the expert. Um, this is just me authentic and that's how it is, right? You want to be authentically you, however you are and whatever, um, whatever style or personality you bring to the table, first of all, in your positioning, okay? I just wanna say hi to a couple people. Hi, Mona, Lisa, and Debbie, and Jeanette, and Gloria. Thanks for um, joining. Um, yeah, and comment or ask questions here. So I was just gonna, I was thinking, okay, what are some of the things that I can point out about positioning yourself in, in your in your industry uh, to be the expert. Because some of you might be doing some of them already, which is fabulous, but other things you may not have considered yet. And so I was racking my brain this morning, like what else can, what can we need to do? So I thought of five things. Okay, so number one is visually positioning yourself. Visually, right? So when you're on video, are you shaky camera all over like I did the other day? Um, uh, do you have a good background? Are you branding in your background? Like, you know, I have my books and branding in the background, right? Um, find a way, if you're gonna do a lot of video, really try to figure out how to position your video image of yourself, right? I try to always do makeup and hair and have a necklace on, right? I don't, like, I'm wearing sweats. <laughs> <laughs> so, but you don't see me from here down, <laughs> and that's okay. Um, and so I position myself in a certain way. Now that doesn't mean I won't come on video without makeup, and there's a lot of people that that will be really raw and show whatever. But you know, if I'm gonna do my makeup and hair, I'm gonna try to do some videos that day. That's just what I do, right? So. 
that's me. So positioning visually on camera is one. Positioning visually, though, on your website is a whole nother ball game, right? If you are trying to do your own website, I would caution you because you're probably not, a, unless you are a graphic designer or a web designer, you're probably gonna make some missteps in the look and feel and design of your website. And you want to position, your website should be the hub of your business. Your website is the number one most important thing you're going to probably invest in besides your own coaching, uh, you know, getting coaching. So you want to, and moving forward, it's not going to change. The internet is not going away. People are going to make decisions to hire you or, or book you to speak based on your website. So do not skimp on your website. Put it into your budget to invest more and update on a regular basis. Very important. So very important also visually is to get uh, some good headshots and photos of yourself. Make sure you're using good images on your website and your marketing materials, not just clip art images. I have some people that come to me and they created an ebook with a bunch of clip art in there, and it's obviously clip art, and clip art is so outdated when you can find so many cool images these days or create your own images with your own photos and stuff. So watch your visual, right? And that's online and offline, so it could be in your marketing materials. I don't have one here, but Oh, I have a flyer from my, my friend, Karee. She's running the Sacramento Women's Expo, for example, right? So that's good branding, good visual representation. But if you're going to create, um, I don't know, something that looks not so well done in your marketing materials, you really want to be careful and, and um, get some good graphics that match. Everything should flow and match together, right? So your website graphics should look similar to your print material graphics, should look similar to, say, behind the video thing. It should all be visually appealing, professional, and flow together with a similar look and feel. So that's number one. Uh, and then number two is content. So to position yourself with powerful content about your topic or your industry. So whenever I go live or write an email newsletter or record a video or write an article, it's always about something to help you jumpstart your business, your marketing, your website, yourself, right? Something to do with what I'm doing. I don't, I don't often um, go off topic, right, with that. And I'm sharing really good tips and, and things to think about and things to do and all that kind of stuff. Now, if you're more of a health coach or a mindset coach, sometimes you can't always give advice like like if, if I was a health coach and I was talking to 20 of you, like all of you might need a little bit of a different advice. And in business sometimes you do too, but we all but it's slightly different, right? So in health coaching, you might be careful of, of what kind of advice you're giving um, or have a disclaimer or have a couple different types of target markets that you talk to. So if you're this problem, if you, you have this you know issue, then this is what I suggest for you. So you might segment your tips and your content a little bit more in that regard. Um, but your content could be visually, written, uh, audio, or the content on your website. Again, looking at what you're writing on your web pages is really, really important. So hey, Cindy and Chi, Make sure, thanks for, you said great information, that's awesome, thanks Gloria. Um, but put, put questions or tell me, you know, put your website in here or tell me what you're, what you're focusing on to position yourself better in the comments if you would while you're watching. Um, so position yourself with the right content. There's a lot of entrepreneurs out there that don't create a lot of content. That's a huge mistake. You gotta figure out a way to get some content out of your head, either on paper, on your blog, on social media, in images or on video like this. It's so much easier for me to just click record and record something and talk. It doesn't have to be perfect. I just wrote down a couple notes here of what I wanna say and I have it in front of me in case I forget and you just go with it. You don't have to, if you wait too long to try to create your content, if you wait like three weeks to write an article, ah, like nobody, like one article is not gonna make you the expert or get you a client, right? So. You have to get out more frequent content in whatever way is easy for you is what I say. So the third key to positioning yourself more as an expert is proof. You gotta have proof that you know what you're doing. 
So various ways to have proof is number one, you could write a book because usually people that have a book have proof. You have more credibility because you have a book and you've written a book. Um, there's also testimonials and success stories. Make sure you highlight a lot of your clients on your websites, in your YouTube videos, in your social media, and in your marketing materials all over the place. You've got to have some testimonials and uh, success stories. And even bring them on video if you want to and do interviews with your success stories. Highlight them at your events. Wherever you go, you should highlight your testimonials. And then uh, in addition to um, proof is also credibility. So have you gotten, have you won awards? Have you been interviewed on different podcasts or TV shows? Or have you published an article in a magazine? Make sure that stuff is out there on your website. I run across entrepreneurs all the time that uh, I come to find out when we're building their website that, you know, oh, you had an award? Like you won this last year? Oh my God, how come you're not, you know, publicizing it everywhere with a press release and on your on your about page or your media page, right? So we have to make sure we highlight some of the things that are gonna give you more credibility and, um, and proof and, you know, success and show that, you know, your stuff was works <laughs> and that you are an expert. Um, number four is packaging yourself. So a lot of times, you don't look like an expert because you're just selling a call here or a session there or a coaching session here and you haven't really figured out how to package yourself and your services as an expert yet. And so packaging goes with pricing as well. So everything that you're selling, it has to be super easy for us to understand that you uh, are the expert in XYZ. And because you have the system on it, you also have the book on it, you have the webinar on it, you have the live event on it, etc. So packaging yourself with that expertise in mind and then pricing it accordingly. If you're too low priced, we're going to think you don't really know what you're doing. So be careful. If your people are saying that you're too low priced, you have to get over the fear of raising that rates and just do it. Peel the bandaid off, raise the rates. You can do it. Right? And then show that value with people. Um, Gloria says, doing webinars on personal branding. How do you show up? Is that a question? Um, I know you probably show up pretty well. I haven't seen one of your webinars, Gloria, but I know you in person. And um, so you're doing personal branding now, I assume. So, yeah, I mean, if that's what you're doing, you got to show the part, right? So when I say that you need to be everywhere, meeting a thousand new people every month and marketing yourself and being visible on all social platforms and have a really good website and lots of video and doing live events and speaking and all this stuff that you should be doing, I should be doing it too, right? So I walk my talk for sure. And so if that's whatever you're doing, you need to do it. You need to walk that talk of whatever you're teaching. Okay, so some people out there are have walked their talk before and now they're teaching it, but they're not doing it anymore. And I don't know. I mean, I still think following people who are still in the trenches of whatever it is you're following them for is really important. So, um, okay, so the fifth thing is um, access, right? I talked about it in the beginning of the video. How much access are you giving to people? Are you giving them too much access for too low of a price? Therefore, you might not be equated with expert status. You might still be in newbie status because, oh, well, she'll talk to anybody for free and, you know, then, you know, you just, you lower the value of people working with you for free. Like I've been doing this two hour masterclass, okay? And I did it, I've been doing it actually since maybe last uh, September. So almost a year now that I've been doing this two hour masterclass. It's not what we're doing here, but it's on Zoom. It's two hours once a month on a Friday and I just did it this morning uh, and I've been doing it for a really low price and I was doing it as a like 79 bucks okay for, to come for two hours to do like a group coaching masterminding session with me and frankly people are not paying attention I've been marketing the hell out of that for months in my newsletter on social media and I even give free tickets to it and nobody takes advantage so but then the other hand, people are complaining, oh, I'm not getting clients and I wish I could afford your services, Katrina. Well, you're not paying attention because $79 is pretty darn cheap and free is even cheaper. So pay attention, people, right? The point is, though, that $79 to come for two hours with me one-on-one -on -one is too much access for too low of a price. 
right? So, but I tested it. I was testing it for a year because um, I charge way more than that for masterminding and stuff like that. So I'm probably going to be doing away with that first of all because people aren't paying attention. You don't want to. You don't want to spend two hours with me so I can troubleshoot. I mean, today we worked on people's Facebook images. We worked on uh, packaging. Their, themselves and their program. We worked on creating, we looked at the back end of their website and their shopping cart and I was showing them how to do stuff. I mean, very valuable, like hundreds of dollars worth of value for each person on the call. So be careful giving too much access at when you're trying to establish that expert status. And, um, you know, it was just, like I said, sometimes you have to try stuff out and if it works, it works. If it doesn't, you cancel it. It's no big deal. But think about that when you're giving access. And so people that want to create like a mastermind program, but they want to do it for $49 a month. Well, a mastermind is typically a high-end thing, right? So make sure that whatever you're calling your $49 program, it's not maybe a mastermind because that should be maybe reserved for a $10,000 program or a $20,000 program instead. It's just something to think about. So And make sure you're not giving access one-on-one -on -one to too many people, leverage your time in groups if you're going to charge a lower price for something, and um, just be careful with that access. So we've talked about visually positioning yourself as an expert, um, develop, positioning yourself as an expert with expert content on a regular, frequent basis, providing proof that you're the expert in many different ways, and then packaging yourself as an expert. What are you selling and how are you packaging it and pricing it? And then we talked about access. How much access are you giving? And that can determine sometimes your expert status as well. So those are five things I think that help you either position yourself as an expert in your industry or do the opposite. So you want to be careful of how you're positioning yourself online. And so the first thing I would do if you're ready to take action is go look at your website. But look at your website from the new person's perspective, like your website should be designed for people that don't know you at all whatsoever, honestly, because the people who know, like, and trust you will go there and look for stuff. But go look at your website with new eyeballs, like somebody who's never seen you before. Can they tell what you do in three seconds or less without scrolling or reading? Probably not for most of you. So be careful. If you want more help with this, I'm really, really good at finding ways for you to be more efficient, productive, and profitable to get that expert positioning in place, whether it's online, offline, on your website, and your marketing materials. I'm really good at identifying the things that you need to tweak, change, or what copy or things need to be tweaked or changed and giving you those words and giving you those exact things you can do to up level yourself to that next step. So I would love, love, love to talk with any of you um, who are who are not making the money you want to make, frankly, and you're working too hard. If that's the case, then it could be the positioning strategies that I mentioned here that are holding you back from making those, getting those clients. So you can, you can go to my website, you can come to an event, you can come and talk to me. Really what you want to do is comment. Uh, let's chat in the comments or private message me with your concerns and let's see how we can help you okay um, and my events I have two events coming up before the end of the year if you want to know everything from A to Z in your business on how to set a lot of different things up so you're running more like a smooth running machine um, and you've got the right things for sale and you're doing the right marketing that's the November jumpstart your business a weekend event if you go to livebigevents.com livebigevents.com you'll find the, the upcoming events I even have my event dates for 2019 on there as well um, and you can good pricing is my issue oh good okay pricing I love to talk pricing with people Gloria because uh, I can show you how to double your double your revenues <laughs> pretty quickly if we just have a quick conversation. Um, and then the, there's a one day event happening in December. I added this after this last weekend's event because so many people got so much done. They loved it. I got the feedback back and they're like exactly what I needed. I was so excited to learn how to use my shopping cart. Um, I was so excited to finally get some of the autoresponders set up that I've been waiting to do. I didn't know how to do them. 
So we're gonna, it's like a hands-on, bring your laptop, work on the back end stuff for your business, and you don't have to do it all forever, but you have to understand how it all flows and works together in your business. And that one day event is going to be um, December 13th. It's a Thursday, all day in Sacramento area. Um, for 400 bucks, so 397, and the reason, and it's only 10 people, so I've already got three people signed up. It's 10 people plus maybe a couple of my mastermind clients. Um, that's it, because I want to be really giving a lot of attention. So for 400 bucks, you can get my eyeballs on your business all day long in a mastermind setting, and it's super helpful, you guys. Seriously, so you might want to consider one or both of these events, and um, so go to livebigevents.com. I'm really good in person helping you jumpstart your business. So thanks for listening. Go position yourself better. Um, private message me. Let's chat, you guys. And have a wonderful Labor Day weekend. Okay. Bye now.